of different vegetation type. And either by the farming practices, but if you plow the soil, you turn the A horizon on the soil. The, the character of Central Oregon, you just have to go out away from the cities and, and drive around and you can see it's the West. It's that rural landscape and without it, we, we would be looking at, you know, basically rural sprawl and development. I'm Sarah Lee from Rain Shadow Organics in Terrebonne, Oregon. We run 10,000 acres. We are so proud to get to spend our time ranching and moving cattle and gathering and raising things from start to finish. Agriculture has always been a key part of the culture of Central Oregon. What stands out in Deschutes County compared to the rest of the state would be the loss of farmland in terms of how fast it's happening. Finding farmland in the first place is super difficult. We are a multi-generational farm and I'm extremely grateful to my partner's parents for being able to purchase this land. The cost of land has gone up so much since I was a kid even here. If you don't have that sort of family support, it's really difficult to even find farmland. Driving through this area, you wouldn't think that agriculture would be under any threat out here, but it really is. There's a lot of latent pressure to approve non-farm dwellings on existing parcels or divide parcels off of larger farms or ranches. And every time you put a non-farm unit out here, it increases the land value and it also increases the potential for conflicts. Now the subdivisions have moved in around it and we got complaints pretty frequently. Agriculture and residential use are at odds. It's worse than oil and water. I'm a uh, rancher farmer in Post, Oregon. By default, I've become a land use advocate. By default, not necessarily by choice. We have you know, tremendous development pressures here in Central Oregon. But let's talk about the cost that it is to a greater society, to where you have these rural residential developments or subdivisions. They need fire, they need police, they need medical services, they need school services. And so those services have to come all the way out. It becomes very expensive to service these faraway rural residential dwellings. and residential and wildlife. They certainly don't mix. We have fantastic birds of prey, golden eagles, red-tailed hawks. We have to look at the big picture and, and protect the creatures we cohabit with. And you have to be ecologically sustainable to be economically sustainable. If you fragment the landscape, there's no way you're gonna put it back together. Housing is the last crop. There's a lot at stake here. I think on the local level, we need to stand firm. We need to really think about what our values are and looking way into the future. <laughs>